morning y'all i am back i had a week off y'all i kind of feel rejuvenated i was sick y'all i was down bad okay um and i'm really just now kind of getting over the cold so that's good but yeah welcome back um happy wednesday y'all it is like 7 25 i'm heading into walmart because i have nothing to give a mirror for his lunchbox so we are gonna do this real quick and drop him off at school and get the work day started so i wanted to just pop in and say hello and i miss you all and let's get into this work vlog together real real quick and then we're gonna have him out of here i usually drop my sister off with him to kind of walk him in but i'm gonna have to do that today um because she's not here she my mom is off on wednesday so she can take her to school on wednesday so i'm gonna have to walk amir all the way in and he usually gets a little teary eye when i walk him in but hopefully we do good today right mir you gonna be okay yeah. i just got him some capri suns the roaring water ones because they're just a little bit more healthier and then i get him his crustables and then he likes this little Paw Patrol fruit thing. It has cheese, fruit, and cookies. And then he has some goldfish. So that's what we pack in today. So let me go drop him off. And I will see y'all when I get back home and get this work day started. Hey, right, y'all. So it is 8.35. I have just clocked in, getting ready to start the work day. Um, it feels so weird, y'all. I literally have not vlogged a work day um in like a week so it, it's only been a week but it feels like a month i don't know why but moving on to what we got to do today so y'all for those of you who don't know i am a talent acquisition coordinator specialist um i onboard candidates for the hospital that i work for um for the state of illinois i do not actually work for um this company in my actual state florida um i work for the one in Illinois. Uh, this hospital is in Jacksonville. I just don't work for it. Um, I don't support that team. I could support that team if I moved to like a different team, but I'm not on that team and I'm perfectly fine with working with people that I don't know. Um, because I know if I work for the, if I supported the team in Jacksonville, I know I would have a gang of people like, hey, can you put me in here? And it's so frustrating. <laughs> so I have 27 candidates that I need to possibly track today. It is a clearance week and everyone who is starting on September 6th uh, will need to be cleared today by 3 p.m. Um, if they are a transfer, like an internal candidate, then they can be cleared by Friday. Um, for the most part, most of all my transfer candidates are already cleared. Those I typically don't have to worry about. Um... It is my new employees that I have to worry about. So let's see how many candidates that I have this morning that are like top priority. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six candidates that's main priority. And most of these candidates, I'm basically waiting on education. Like y'all, it is so freaking hard to obtain the education for some of these um candidates like i really wish there were other ways that we can do it which we're now incorporating something new where we're going to take experience over education um uh, which is good because i don't have to go searching for the education if this person has two three years experience in this role we just look at the experience on the background check and keep it pushing um because sometimes you know if these people graduated in the 70s or 60s those schools may not be schools anymore like it's it's just a lot of difficulties um that you have to deal with so yeah a lot of these are dealing with education that i'm waiting on so like it's really nothing i can do if they don't submit um so basically my task today is i'm just gonna reach out to the hiring leaders and my recruiters and let them know that hey this is what's pending we may have to push the candidate start date so by the time 3 p.m comes um if i have not received documentation i can just go ahead and change their start date and put a ticket in like i don't have to wait for confirmation i like to get the confirmation early okay my son's school made sure they text me to tell me it's early release my son has early release every wednesday y'all and it's so irritating because 
I'll have to leave here. His he has to be picked up at 2:30 for early release. And I like to get there super early, so I'll probably leave here at like one. So that literally gives me from 8:41 right now to one to like kind of put a dent in my work. And as long as I track all my priority candidates first, I'm good. Like the rest, I know I'll get done before it's time for me to go. So I'm not worried about that. Okay, but let me get started on this work y'all and then i'll come back hey. bad little flex she wanna know me i stay low key y'all cast no breaks baby let them hold sleep body on to make your girl OD. i get in my way never out of my lane feel like you're the one and i'm on one so what is gonna be baby squad up we finna go deep y'all i gotta come on here and rant just a little bit so i have a candidate right and he is supposed to start um next tuesday the 6th right and all he has is two items y'all two items that he needs to complete and we can start him on the 6th i've literally been calling him for weeks he has not answered he has not responded to emails he has not responded to text messages he has not responded to voicemails i give him a call and he has a straight up attitude. And for the life of me, I can never understand why somebody who wants a job will have an attitude like, like we're not gonna go back and let the recruiter know how rude you are because it's like you, you haven't been hired yet. Like you're not hired until you come on that day one. So anything could happen in between that process. And he was just very, very rude saying, you know, we're blowing up his email. Sir, you haven't finished your your uh, task. Like, that's why we're blowing you up. So you, we're trying to help you. We're trying to get you to start on time, sir. Like, help me understand. So he's talking about we don't have no sense of urgency uh, for him to start. But mind you, before saying that, he let me know that he couldn't start on the six because he has to work his other job. And the way we work is that we can only start a candidate on an orientation week, which is every other week. So our next orientation week is until the 19th. So I'm like, okay, are you going to start on 19th? He's like, no, I can't do that. I have to work another job. Okay, well, the next orientation is until October 3rd. So he was like, there's no sense of urgency. Look, y'all, I... I the words wanted to come out so bad, but I'm just like, I wanted to say so bad, sir, there was no sense of urgency for you to complete these tasks. So how dare you say that we don't have a sense of urgency? Like we can only start you on orientation week. And I kept expressing that to him, but he act like he wasn't understanding. And I guess he thought by saying all that was going to make, no, I'm like, I cannot start you on an opposite week. Like, and I wouldn't even, if, even if I could do that, y'all, I wouldn't because you haven't even completed your task. Like, he's talking about, we expected him to complete everything all in one day. No, you're not expected to complete it all in one day, but your offer was sent. When was this offer sent? The offer was sent to him on August 9th, y'all. It is August 31st. You have more than enough time. More than enough time to complete your work. So, I had to just send the um, recruiter a little nice little blur. Because I'm just like, if this will be hiring room. It is 11:57. I have pretty much tracked all those like main priority um candidates. I just have like three right now that's like kind of pending because they're in limbo. I don't know. We're waiting on things, so I'm waiting on like hiring managers to get back with me. As Mara, do you have the information available? In the email, there is the orientation flyer attached. These, you know what irritates me is that people don't read. Like, people really don't read. Um... Oh. 
anyway hiring manager just reached out to me asking about orientation for a candidate but i listed the flyer in the email they just needed to open the attachment but anywho 11 59 almost 12 o'clock i'm just gonna eat me a little bit of lunch i had chick-fil-a last night but i didn't finish my food because y'all i literally was in the chick-fil-a line for like an hour waiting on this because i'm addicted to their strips and mac and cheese and by the time i got home i wasn't even hungry anymore all i ate was the mac and cheese so i'm eating my strips now i wanted my son capri suns i need to drink me some water because i ain't drunk no water down but i wanted to get on here and talk to you guys about like resumes and stuff because i had some people reach out to me about that so i was like hmm, maybe uh, some of my other subscribers are like having the same question too. So, um, here's the rule of thumb when it comes to resumes, guys. Just a quick disclaimer, guys. I am speaking from experience when reviewing resumes. You do not have to listen to this advice. Of course, do what's best for you. Um, these are just things that I found while being in the HR world. So, yeah. When I review a resume for a job, I want to see, like, your experience should stick out. Like, I should be able to skim through your resume and see your experience. I'm going to be completely honest with you. If I have to read par paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs on paragraphs about your experience, I'm skipping it. And I've seen other hiring leaders do the very same thing. Like we want to be able to see your experience. Like it should be right there in my face. I should be able to, oh, um, they've done this, they've done this, they've done this. Cool. That's smooth them along in the process. That's get an interview. Um, same with like education, like your education should be short and sweet. It should be, everything should be on one page. Um, I really don't like to see two page resumes, like everything should fit on one. Um, so, you know, use keywords, condense it, however you need to do it, but everything should fit on one page. Um, you only want to put like seven years of experience on there. And I always kind of say like relevant experience. So you know um if you are going into the hr field but you have something on there like oh mcdonald's cashier that's not really relevant to what you're doing so if i see your resume like i'm gonna be like well this has nothing to do with what they're applying to so i'm just gonna look over that now say you were applying say you know you were cashier you're dealing with customers that's customer service skills and say you're applying to like a call center or something like that 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 may need to be on there um if that was like your first job or something but if it's not your first job and you have tons of like professional experience do not put that on there um because it like we we really don't care to see it so um like I said, just rule of thumb, just make sure like all your um, experience can fit on one page and it's condensed. And I can I can pick out your um, experience immediately. I really, I don't have time to sit here and filter through paragraphs, guys. Like make, make sure, I'm telling you, you will thank me later. Put the relevant things on there, stuff that when you're applying to a role, whatever you see in their description, you need to tweak that resume some kind of way and put that as your experience because you may have that experience that they're saying in their uh, description, but maybe you just didn't word it right. So kind of word it how they would word it and then also word it how um, the job posting was listing when you started the, the role that you're actually in now. So if you're an HR coordinator, and you're going to um, an HR generalist role, right? The HR coordinator uh, on your resume, that little blurb that you have on there should be somewhat similar to the description of the job posting. So when a manager, recruiter, sourcer, um, tele acquisition like me, we're looking at it, oh, I can easily pick out what your experience is. So just to help some of those uh, people out who's like, applying applying to places and you're really not hearing anything back change up your resume because i promise you 
some people think if their resume is too easy no easy is better like if we can navigate through that and and know instantly what your experience is and how long you've been doing this the better but if we have to read through paragraphs nobody's gonna do that i promise you no one's gonna do that so make it so make it easy for the recruiter and the hiring manager. So y'all, we are headed to get the kitty. It is 1.27. He gets out at 2.30, but I think I'm just gonna pick him up early, like just do early dismissal because I really don't feel like waiting in that line. Y'all, that line is murderous. It be so long and they literally take their precious little time. It seems like they go by car, car one by one and be like, who are you here for? Um. And I just feel like they gotta come up with a better process than that because it go by so so and I be in there. I, I, it what feels like hours be like 30 minutes, but still to me 30 minutes is too long to be waiting on my child. So I think I'm gonna go just check him out early versus just waiting in line. And also trying to figure out what I'm cooking tonight. Malik say he wants some jambalaya and he really don't even like jambalaya. So I don't even know why he's asking me to make this tonight, but make it that's what he wants because i like them like my mom used to make it all the time when i was a kid and we loved it um she didn't make it from scratch she used to use the zatarin's one but it was still really really good so i just use that one and kind of add what i want in it i usually just put um sausage and shrimp sometimes i'll do uh shrimp and chicken so it really just depends but yeah i headed to get him and then when i get back home finish up my work for the day Maya. She's at home. How was school? Oh shoot, your car seat's on the other side. Come on. Did you have a good day? Huh? Y'all, he always have an attitude when I pick him up. Come on. Y'all, right, so it is 1014. Um, what a long day I've had, y'all. Whew. Hopefully tomorrow be a better work day, y'all. I absolutely hate when my manager is not yeah. in because you know, things you would normally do, you can't do because other people are feeling in her spot and they're kind of going to be like by the book. So I still have one candidate left that I need to clear. Um, but we're just waiting on one thing that's kind of like out of our control. But I'm hoping by tomorrow morning that'll be clear. But before I edit the vlog, I wanted to pop on here and talk about my ponytail, y'all. I really, really like it. This is what a couple, some of you have suggested the last, maybe like three, four vlogs ago when I attempted to do the braid, if y'all can remember. Well, yeah did the ponytail and i really 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 like it i basically got some hair store hair hold on y'all let me get it because i'm gonna show y'all come on tripod all right hold on so i use this like master mix hair it's called organic this is what i use it's a water wave it says um you can curl iron this up to 400 degrees and it's 24 inches. I have no intentions on curling this. It is the exact curl that I want it to be. I like to wear curly hair because like I have waves and I just think it looks a little bit more natural. So this isn't a like drawstring ponytail. It, it is actually track hair, um, which I prefer track hair because I don't know. A ponytail always looks like a pony drawstring ponytail to me. So I always just go for a track hair. And I just basically wrap it around my ponytail and like use a few of these like uh bobby type pins and to mold my hair down to make it stay because I am natural. Um I just use Eco Styler in this mix. This um Aussie Moist Instant Freeze. I put the gel in my hand and then I spray this in my hand rub it together in a mold and i use a very 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 hard brush and it usually will stay and i kind of just oh my goodness wear my cap around it like before i go somewhere or at night and it's good so yes really really like it i've had my hair like this for just a few days now um i had got two packs because it's not it's synthetic so of course this is not gonna last very long as you can already see it's starting to like stick together so I bought two so when this is done i can just switch it out to this one and it was only ten dollars so i said on that oh note my. that is the end for this work day in a life vlog y'all i hope y'all enjoyed it comment below if you're new here and how you you know came across my page i would love to know how you guys are 
finding me. Um, so glad to have you all here. Can't wait to get back to posting this content and gaining more of you guys. So yeah, I thank you guys for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye, love.